we are going to be going over our picks for the top 10 times a video game pissed off the world, be it because of the content, the state of release, or any other reasons. These are going to be games that just push the gaming world and the non-gaming world over the edge. So sit back, drop a like on the video, and away we go. At number 10, we have Resistance Fall of Man. This shooter from 2006 was pretty fun, and it's a shame that we haven't really been hearing much about the Resistance series in a while, as the last game was released in 2012 and flew under the radar. However, there's a good chance this controversy had something to do with why Resistance has been laying low in recent years. In the first game, Fall of Man, there is a sequence where the player does battle inside of the Manchester Cathedral in England. Needless to say, the Church of England was not happy about the cathedral being used without permission, as well as the cathedral being used as a battleground for the video game. This controversy actually greatly increased the game sales in the UK and almost brought in an influx of visitors to the cathedral. Go figure. At number 9, we have a game that I've never heard of until I made this video, Hatred. Do any of you remember this game? Probably not. Hatred was released on Steam in 2015 and had an insane amount of controversy surrounding it. The game was simply about going around and killing everyone in the world with no consequence. Kind of sounds like Postal 2. Aside from the incredibly brutal violence, many news outlets picked up the game to criticize it for being senseless and over the top, which is it, it absolutely was. In fact, it's one of the few games to ever get an AO rating for violence alone. After all the intense backlash, Gabe Newell actually pulled the game from Steam's Greenlight program, halting its release on the platform, but it was soon put back on the Steam Marketplace with a personal apology from Gabe. So why don't you remember this game? Well, it's actually not that good. It's almost like it was made to stir controversy and nothing else, as the game itself is insanely repetitive and boring to say the least. Oh well. Now I know there are a lot of salty Mass Effect fans right now, and Mass Effect 3 could be why. Arguably the deepest series in video game history, Mass Effect 3 was set to close up the trilogy and have an incredible ending that changed depending on the decisions made by the player all the way back from Mass Effect 2 and 1. Well, you probably know by now, this was a big fat lie. Not only did the game not have an ending that was influenced by prior games, as it was promised to have, but the game only had a handful of endings, period, and almost all of them were the same. Not only did this render everything you have done in previous games as pointless, but it also pissed off the entire gaming world when it was revealed that the epic trilogy had one of the worst endings of all time. Bioware tried to heal the wounds with some expansions that changed the ending, but the damage had already been done and the trust of the players in the community had been lost. Do we have any Diablo fans in the comment section? At number seven, we have Diablo 3. Once again, this epic conclusion to a legendary Diablo series definitely pissed the world off upon release. What is it with epic conclusions on trilogies? It didn't anger religious groups or news outlets like some of the other entries on this list, but rather, this one pissed off the world of gamers. Diablo 3 featured a new component of the game that required the player to be online at all time, even when not using online services. This ended up causing a lot of problems as the game servers were not ready for the amount of traffic that the game ended up bringing in at release, leading to thousands upon thousands of gamers being met with the now infamous Air 37 and being locked out of the game. It seems almost every instance of video game history where a developer introduces always online requirements never goes well. Developers, message from me to you, stop doing this. Most of you knew when you saw the title of this video that our number six spot would be on here. Manhunt 2. While many games seem to get backlash from sensitive critics and news outlets for being too violent, Manhunt 2 was almost universally accepted as excessive, as the game quite literally glorified brutal murder. The game even had to be heavily censored to avoid an AO rating from the ERSB, which would have greatly hurt its initial sales. Rockstar was forced to remove many of the decapitations as those were the main complaint and place fillers on the screen to make the extra graphic moments harder to see. This was enough to get the game an M rating and official release, but of course, some smarter gamers found ways to get the uncensored versions after the release, 
and they're pretty brutal, even by today's standards. Another one you may have never heard of at number five is Thrill Kill. While some games get extremely violent and graphic, it's pretty rare for a game to get shut down altogether because of this. Well, enter Thrill Kill, one of the few games to actually get shut down by the developers because they thought it was too extreme. In fact, Thrill Kill was the first game ever to get the AO rating for violence alone. But in 1998, when the game was essentially completed and already rated, the publishers were not a fan of the extreme violence and the incredibly high rating. So they stopped the game from ever seeing the light of day. However, since the game was already finished and rated, it became a very easily bootlegged thing to do. And plenty of players have gotten their hands on it since its initial cancellation. You can't have a controversial game top 10 without this on there. Number four, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. The Grand Theft Auto series is controversial in itself. Pretty much every new entry brings new controversies and people claiming that they're promoting crime and murder and yada, yada, yada. But there was one entry in the GTA series that went above and beyond the expectations. Meet Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. When it was released, there was a sequence that allowed you to take a girl home and uh, have relations with her with an interactive mini game involved. This was removed from the game, but not too long after, of course, players figured out ways to get it back in the game, as the coding for the sequence was just locked off rather than deleted from the game entirely. Was that a mistake, or was that done on purpose? What famously became known as Hot Coffee went down in history as one of the most controversial discoveries in video game history, as at the time, there was nothing this sexually graphic in video games. Another one you probably guessed would be on this list at number three is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Remember, no Russian. Those three words managed to piss off just about every single person in the world. Released in 2009, Modern Warfare 2 was the follow-up to the epic Call of Duty 4 and continued the story of Soap, Price, and Makarov's plans for world destruction. However, there was one mission in Modern Warfare 2 that managed to get tons of mainstream attention and not for a good reason. The mission involves the player going undercover as a terrorist in order to get inside information on the game's antagonist, Makarov, but also pits the player in an airport as the terrorist group guns down hundreds of innocent civilians. And your character is allowed to shoot down as many as they wish or not shoot any. Needless to say, this sparked massive controversy and many news outlets accused the game of promoting terrorism and called Modern Warfare 2 a game where people could live out their terrorist fantasies. The controversy was eventually watered down as the mission is completely skippable and the player gets a warning beforehand that there is graphic content ahead. Plus, the player doesn't actually have to kill anyone, like I said, in order to proceed, and the mission is very essential to the story of the game It wasn't put in the game for the hell of it. Regardless of the justifications for the mission, No Russian has gone down in history, video game history, as one of the biggest gaming controversies of all time. Now we're going back to Mass Effect for number two. This entry isn't so much what a video game did to piss off the world, but rather what a news station did to a video game that pissed off the world. When the first Mass Effect came out, it was praised for its depth and amount of choices given to the player. However, Fox News was not impressed and decided to blatantly attack the game for its sexual themes. There is a part in the game where it is possible to engage in sexual relationship with an alien woman. The sex scene is not very explicit, and is playable regardless of the player choosing to carry out their adventure as a male or a female, meaning it was possible to have lesbian sexual encounters in this game. Fox News issued their story called it Sex Box and accused the developers of making a pornographic game that contained full digital nudity and sex. EA and BioWare retaliated, claiming that these statements were completely false and demanded that Fox correct themselves and apologize. Well, Fox decided instead to bring a developer on the air with them to question them about the game, and as the Bioware employee tries to defend his game and correct the statements made by the news network, Fox News anchors constantly interrupted him and prevented him from making any kind of point that conflicted with their own, causing, of course, even more anger from the gaming community as Fox News wasn't even trying anymore to show their disrespect for the video game and their disregard for the facts on the matter. The issue eventually calmed down, but at the time it was huge. On one hand, you had gamers furious over the false information being spread as their community of perverts is what they were called. And on the other hand, you had people furious with Fox News for blatantly making up a story and being so rude to their guests who were trying to defend themselves. 
Come on, if you didn't guess this one at number one, what were you thinking? Mortal Kombat. Name another game that single-handedly created an organization to keep violent video games out of the hands of minors. Bet you can't do it. That's how pissed off Mortal Kombat made the world upon its initial release in the early 90s. At the time, violent video games existed, but none were as extreme as MK. When MK hit the arcades and the brutal decapitation, spine rips, and severed limbs were on display for anyone to see, parents were outraged. At this time, there was no rating system or method of seeing what games were more appropriate than others. All games were viewed equally. You could walk into an arcade and see someone playing Donkey Kong, and then walk a couple feet over to the left and see someone getting their spine ripped out in Mortal Kombat. In response to the extreme violence and the millions of parents that were outraged, the ESRB was created to rate video games and let parents know whether or not a game was appropriate for their child. However, it didn't stop there. Some of the home versions of the arcade games were heavily censored with the blood and the fatalities being removed, and many petitions were formed to try and ban violent video games altogether, a debate that still exists to this day. Basically, you can blame Mortal Kombat for starting the violent video games caused violent actions argument that has been going on for decades. That's quite an achievement. 